Imagine a wildfire, not of trees and brush, but of conflict and suffering. This is the current reality in Gaza. The UN aid chief, Martin Griffiths, has likened the situation to a wildfire threatening not only to engulf Gaza, but also to spread across the region. The ongoing war, now in its fifth month, has left the territory in a state of turmoil. The population of southern Gaza's Rafah has surged fivefold, with families fleeing the relentless bombing, seeking shelter where they can, even if it means sleeping out in the open. Griffiths warns that this is a disaster in the making, a crisis that targets not only the physical safety of the people, but also their mental health. The severity of the situation is such that it has been described as a disaster in the making. Martin Griffiths provided five key facts we need to understand about the situation in Gaza. Firstly, the population in southern Gaza's Rafah has seen a five-fold increase. Families desperate to escape the relentless bombings are cramming into shelters and even sleeping in the open. Imagine the terror of not knowing when or where the next explosion might occur, with no safe place to hide. Secondly, the living conditions in the region are dire. The increase in population has led to overcrowding, straining already scarce resources. The lack of access to food, water, shelter and medicine is a disaster in the making, threatening not only physical health but also mental well-being. Thirdly, the potential war crimes committed cannot be ignored. Indiscriminate bombing of densely populated civilian areas and depriving the population of essentials for survival may amount to war crimes. This is a serious allegation that needs urgent investigation and response. Fourthly, Griffiths emphasizes that humanitarian aid alone is not enough. While it provides immediate relief, it doesn't address the root causes of the conflict or provide a long-term solution. The massive needs, pervasive insecurity and persistent access constraints call for a more comprehensive approach. Finally, the threat of the conflict spreading is real. The wildfire in Gaza threatens to consume not only the West Bank and Lebanon, but also the wider region. This is not just a low... These facts paint a stark picture of a region under siege where life is becoming increasingly untenable. The United Nations has sounded the alarm on the rapidly deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza. The United Nations Security Council is deeply concerned about the dire conditions, marking an escalation in an already critical state of affairs. The Israeli bombardment has resulted in the displacement of thousands of individuals, and the destruction of critical civilian infrastructure is widespread. The city of Rafah in southern Gaza is now home to a population that has increased fivefold as families seek refuge from the relentless bombings. These displaced Gazans, forced to leave their homes, face acute shortages of life's most basic necessities. Food and water are scarce, with reports suggesting that the newly displaced have only one and a half to two litres of water per day for drinking, cooking and washing. Shelter is a luxury few can afford and many are sleeping in the open while others are crammed into already overcrowded shelters. Access to medicine is limited and the bombardment has not only targeted public health but has also inflicted widespread trauma, creating a mental health crisis. The scale of the crisis is such that it is not just a disaster waiting to happen, but one that is actively unfolding. Speaking out against injustice can come at a high price. This is a reality that Philippe Lazzarini, head of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, or UNARWA, is acutely aware of. Recently, he voiced concerns that the agency might be paying the price for speaking out against the atrocities in Gaza. Lazzarini's fears stem from the fact that several of UNRWA's largest donors have been withholding funding. This decision to withhold funds is based on allegations made by Israel, allegations that have yet to be independently investigated. The funding, which is crucial to UNRWA's operations, is being held hostage, potentially as a response to the agency's vocal stance against the ongoing crisis. This situation is a sobering reminder of the challenges faced by those who dare to speak up against injustice. Not only do they risk retaliation, but the very resources they need to continue their work could also be jeopardized. The situation in Gaza is a stark reminder that the fight for human rights is not without its risks and challenges. So what is happening in Gaza right now? We've taken a deep dive into the wildfire that is the current conflict in Gaza, a situation that is rapidly escalating and threatens to spread across the entire region. 
The UNA chief Martin Griffiths has warned us of the potential for this situation to become a regional disaster, and the facts bear out his concerns. Firstly, we've learned about the five key facts that Griffiths has brought to our attention. The population of southern Gaza's Rafah has increased fivefold as families desperately try to escape the relentless bombings by seeking refuge in crowded shelters or braving the elements to sleep in the open. The toll this takes on public and mental health is nothing short of a disaster in the making. Furthermore, the massive needs of the people, coupled with pervasive insecurity and persistent access constraints, mean that humanitarian aid, while crucial, is not enough to alleviate the situation. The indiscriminate bombing of densely populated civilian areas and depriving Gaza's population of the essentials for survival may amount to war crimes. The conflict is a veritable wildfire, threatening to consume not just Gaza, but the West Bank, Lebanon, and the wider region. The humanitarian crisis is dire and rapidly deteriorating. The United Nations Security Council has sounded the alarm about the situation in the Gaza Strip. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East, led by Philippe Lasserini, has questioned whether the agency is being punished for speaking out, as several of its largest donors have withheld funding over allegations made by Israel that have yet to be independently investigated. The situation is further complicated by the ongoing Israeli bombardment which continues to result in civilian casualties, displacement, and the destruction of civilian infrastructure. Rafa is now hosting over half of Gaza's population, five times its population prior to the start of the Israeli onslaught in the Strip. 67% of the Gaza Strip has been placed under Israel's evacuation orders, displacing 1.78 million Palestinians who called this area home before the start of the war. The displaced Gazans face acute shortages of food, water, shelter and medicine. The United Nations Children's Fund has reported that most of the newly displaced have just one and a half to two litres of water per day for drinking, cooking and washing. There's also been a significant increase in cases of chronic diarrhoea among children, further compounding the health crisis. The toll on human life is staggering. Since the start of the offensive, close to 27,585 Palestinians, mostly women and children, have been killed and 67,000 others have been injured. Thousands more are missing and presumed dead under the rubble. In conclusion, the situation in Gaza is a wildfire of conflict and suffering, a humanitarian crisis of immense proportions. It's not just a local issue, but a regional and global concern. It requires urgent attention and action from the global community. We can't afford to stand by and watch as the wildfire in Gaza threatens to consume the whole region. The situation in Gaza is a wildfire of conflict and suffering, and it requires urgent attention and action from the global community.